The red pill stuff I always view as having a kernel of truth to it, which is that if you're a younger guy and you go out into the dating world trying to date young women right now, a lot of them are going to be stupid and annoying. <laughs> but guess what? A lot of you gentlemen out there are also stupid and annoying. Young people are often stupid and annoying, women included. And it might even be accurate to say that if you're... Uh, a few years ago, I was when I, the last time I was in the dating play. You know, I've been dating my girlfriend for four years. So when I was dating last, I was uh, 23. And certainly, if you're 23 right now, and you're trying to date other 23 year olds, you're going to meet a lot of annoying, ignorant young women. I totally get how frustrating that is. I have dealt with it myself before I ended up with my current girlfriend. I get it. I get that it's frustrating, and I get that it might make you want to gravitate towards somebody like Tate. But Tate really goes so far with his rhetoric as to imply that 100% of women are just not to be taken seriously. They are basically an inferior sex. And I disagree with it strongly. However, I absolutely do not think he should have been banned from social media. So all of that notwithstanding, the fact that I 100% agree the guy is a misogynist and that he spreads misogyny, 100%. I've heard what he said, and it's like, yes, this guy strikes me as kind of like the worst elements of the manosphere. By the way, I don't hate everyone who's a part of the manosphere red pill. There's some people who aren't so bad. But Tate definitely struck me as like a guy where I'm like, this is not good stuff to be listening to. I disagree with this strongly because it deals in absolutes, and it, you just shouldn't talk that way about women. I don't think you should. I don't think it's accurate. I don't think it's true. But he was... He was targeted by all of these social media companies during a time when his stuff was getting really popular. And the second he started to get really popular and burst into the mainstream, they banned him, not one at a time, but all at once, basically. He was banned from like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the different platforms at the same time. We've seen this with Alex Jones. We saw it with Nick Fuentes. We saw it with Milo Yiannopoulos. A lot of these figures who I disagree with and that I am not in line with necessarily politically, but every time I'm gonna stand up for them and say, they need to be able to say what they're going to say. They should not be banned. And again, because by the way, there's going to be some asshole in the comments who's like, private company can do whatever it wants. I am not talking about what they can do. I'm talking about what they should do. Okay? That is a really annoying and stupid talking point. And I swear to God, someone in the comments is going to say, a private company, do whatever yep. it wants. And it's going to come from the people on the left who, of course, love private corporations. We all know how much they love private corporations, at least suddenly now that this is happening. Yeah. And... So anyway, just to conclude that thought, I, I, the, the, the thing that is typically said, and we're going to get to a debate that Tim Dillon and Ethan Klein had over this, and Ethan Klein said this, the thing that is, the thing that is so often said of people like Tate is if they are hateful or they, say, or they have dangerous ideas, if they're hateful and dangerous, they need to be banned, eliminated from the public square, erased. That is such a slippery slope. The words dangerous and hateful can mean so much. I can come onto the show tomorrow and be like, I hate Antifa. That's hateful. I do fucking hate Antifa. I wish they didn't exist. That shouldn't get me banned. I doubt anyone thinks that should get me banned. But technically, it's hateful. Uh, what is dangerous is completely subjective. At the end of the day, I never saw a clip of Andrew Tate where he was doing the things that I think you should be banned for, which is... Uh, breaking the law with your speech, saying something that is a threat or is illegal, uh, encouraging others to break the law, like if he were to say, like, you should all go out there and beat up women, which I don't think he said, or if he were a representative of a criminal organization like ISIS or something like that. So again, the, the operative idea there is crime. There has to be something criminal for speech to be banned in my view. That wasn't the case with Tate. It wasn't the case with Nick Fuentes. It, Alex Jones was, I know there was defamatory stuff, but that's more of a tort than a crime. And that's, so that's kind of a gray area. But for, most, for the most part, these people are not breaking the law. And when we ban them, we're basically saying that these social media oligarchs and the government should basically be able to conspire together to decide that somebody is dangerous and needs to be banned. And that is a terrible terrible idea and it will result eventually in people like us getting banned and a lot of you in the audience who i know are twitter anons getting banned as well yeah um so i guess i'll start at the top there i agree with you and i would phrase it a little bit differently i think the things that people should be banned from twitter for are those instances in which speech really is violence in the sense of and i think uh tim dylan who i love uh pointed it out in this this video we're going to talk about is doxing and harassment those are actual actions you do with speech right they're the equivalent of basically physical violence you know conspiracies you know th those types of things it almost is 
it's things that don't necessarily have to do with the content of the speech, but has to do with its pervasiveness. It, it, it's how you employ it. There's a call those to are the action. Things you get. Yeah, exactly. Incitement of violence, all, all of those things. But I agree, using terms like dangerous and hateful are just not good enough. And to the point that will show up in the YouTube comments that we're anticipating, let's say yes they are a private company but tell me exactly how like and it's not illegal fine whatever but tell me how twitter how youtube how whoever whatever company is forwarding the case for free speech by banning people they may not be able to be sued for it they may not be able to be charged with it but they're not making the free speech environment any better by just turning people off who aren't actually doing something violent um and then coming up the stack of my notes here, um, this Andrew Tate might be what in my uh, generation was mystery the pickup artist. It's like at least mystery the pickup artist had enough respect for women to try to manipulate them into having sex. Andrew Tate's just like they're completely worthless. I'll just sex them. Like it's he seems like an alt right version of the pickup artist show that used to be on VH1. So, um, but I agree with you that the dangerous and harmful are not good enough standards and the and especially considering what we know about the people who will be enforcing those standards yeah well i also want to respond to because the other thing people are going to say like it's only anti-free speech if the government throws you in jail that is something th there's a clip i'm not gonna play it on the show because it's like a 30 minute clip but I'll, I'll try to link it in the description like i said before ethan klein and tim dylan debated this on the h3h3 podcast it's really interesting. I recommend you look it up because as far as I'm concerned, Ethan Klein made himself out to be an asshole because he did this thing and some asshole is going to do this in the comments, which is it's only anti-free speech if you literally get thrown in jail by the government. And it's like, you don't have to be a political genius or a philosophical virtuoso to understand that there is a legal principle of free speech and there is a moral principle of free speech. No one is talking about the legal principle when we talk about this stuff. Obviously, Twitter is not a government agency. No one thinks that and no one ever says that. But there is a moral principle of free speech that is just as, if not more important than the legal principle. <laughs> like you do not have free speech if you can get fired from your job for saying even just nominally critical things about you know identity politics groups on the left, like BLM or feminists or whatever. And at the same time, P you, and, or you can get erased from existence if you go too far. I mean, these guys are getting eliminated from every platform at once because they're, oh, dangerous, hateful. That's not free speech. That is going against the the idea of the First Amendment, even if, it's, if it isn't literally against the First Amendment. Because yes, the First Amendment is constitutional, it's governmental. But the ideas that undergird the First, First Amendment are supposed to be upheld and lifted up by social institutions and by moral actors known as the human beings that make up our society. Yeah. And I think a lot of the discussion going on between Tim and Ethan here is, is you got uh, Ethan and that's his wife as the other woman that's on that clip or the woman that's Eli, on that yeah, clip. Yeah. That's Ela Klein. Uh, yeah. Ela Klein. They're basically saying, look at how bad this person is. Look at the harm he's causing. And Tim turns around and says, yeah, I don't like the guy. I think at one point he says, like, I don't want him to be a senator. But, <laughs> you know, he's like, I don't. But he's also like, I don't like faceless execs at tech companies being the arbiters of how bad someone is to justify booting them from their sources of income. I mean, you look at someone like who you've had on this show, Megan Murphy, who lost money, probably a lot of it. I think she talked about it in the interview, which you should all go and watch. It's good. It's Megan Murphy's great um, for saying men can't be women. Men aren't women. I don't remember exactly what she said. That's what she said. And and she's uh, yeah. lo losing money, losing customers, clients, jobs for that. I really wanted Tim to bring up Megan because at mm -hmm. one point Ethan said, or I think it was actually Ela. Yeah, it was, it was his wife who was saying like, you have to be really bad to get kicked off. You have to really cross the line. It's like, no, you don't. Yeah. Look at Megan Murphy. Got kicked off Twitter for saying that men can't be women or that men aren't women. I think the exact quote is men aren't women though gets kicked off Twitter. Uh, Destiny, the leftist Twitch streamer, who is a smart leftist, but a leftist nonetheless, or, or a liberal. I don't know if that qualifies as leftist anymore, but he's, he's nominally on the left at the very least, kicked off of Twitch probably 
because of statements that he made that were a little bit more nuanced about some of the trans stuff and I think the trans in sports stuff. And although I don't think it ever became completely 100% clear exactly why Destiny was kicked off Twitch. But anyway, look, if it's happening to Destiny, the slippery slope is in full effect, people. Like, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was that James Lindsay said that got him banned, but James Lindsay isn't... He's a little bit of a nutter sometimes on Twitter. I, I mean, I, I didn't... Look, to be fair, I didn't... I, I unfollowed James Lindsay at one point on Twitter just because I could barely understand what he was saying. But, but I don't think he was a completely, like, alt-right Nazi, anything like that. He got banned. Again, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't remember the specifics of why he was banned. I, but I again, think he got banned over the groomer stuff. When Twitter started coming after the term groomer, oh, I think he was still... Yeah, but you're up. allowed to be wrong. Like, I don't necessarily agree. And look, it would depend also on what James Lindsay was actually calling grooming, because some stuff is grooming. Like, the stuff yeah. where your kids are getting brought into the, like, trans stripper drag shit, that's grooming. That's what that is. But... Uh, if let's say hypothetically, I'll be charitable here and assume because I don't I don't know. I'll assume that he called something grooming that I probably wouldn't call grooming myself. Like maybe it's a teacher kind of trying to indoctrinate a student into gender ideology, and there's nothing overtly sexual going on, which is bad by the way, but it's not necessarily grooming. It's like you're allowed to be wrong. You're allowed to be wrong. Like and as long as he's not inciting people to attack that person, saying like this person's a groomer and you should all, you know, go to their house and here's their address. That's the thing about doxing is. If the information is not, if the information is publicly available, it's different. Right. So again, publicly available information is like, of course you can share that. It's there. But yeah, if you're, if you're, I would also agree with what you said before about doxing has a call to action implicitly. Like if you share, if you go, by the way, interesting, I found this person's address. <laughs> like, like there's a call to action there, even yeah. if there isn't. And I would say that should be perhaps bannable when the information being provided is not public information when you really had to dig for it because an, an address is a hell of a thing to share <laughs> yeah that is such an implicit threat or really an explicit threat um to and share with someone's hard like, to kids sleep yeah unfortunately like, uh, you know unless you're really trying to be anonymous it's it's hard to keep, keep your address completely anonymous yeah it's really unfortunate how easy it is for someone to dox you but yeah it's it, it's look I, I think that, and this is why I was so excited about maybe Elon Musk having taken over Twitter, which doesn't look like it's going to happen now, but because he said, I think that you should always, when it's in a gray area, err on the side of free speech. And I'm like, yes, that is the American way is if it's in, if you have to ask the question of if this is okay, then you keep it, then you let it live and you let it breathe. And only in the cases where it's undeniable, because the people will always make out, you know, someone like us to be like, free speech absolute is like, oh, you're going to let ISIS be on YouTube? And it's like, no, there's obvious rules to put in place that are clear and easy to use, such as, again, the criminal standards, no criminal activity, very, very easy to ban stuff that's criminal or on behalf of a criminal organization. The doxing, there's an implicit threat there. It really yeah. shouldn't be, I don't think it should be legal to dox someone, frankly, if, as long if it's not publicly in available information, by the way. Um, I mean, specifically, yeah. um, there should probably be some kind of rule against that, but look, it's, it's a really bad situation that I just, I get frustrated because it feels like people on the woke left, I, I can't tell if they literally don't understand the concept of free speech or just don't care. I can't tell when someone like Ethan Klein is sitting there saying, this guy's hateful, he's dangerous. And Tim Dillon is saying like, do you understand that there's just a small group of people who are deciding who is hateful and who is dangerous and that any one of us could be thrown in there at any time? Ethan Klein himself got in trouble for making gay jokes like two months ago. Like, and it was right after Jordan Peterson warned him, like, they're going to come after you too. And I don't know, man. It reminds me of that meme where it's like, woman who voted for tigers eating your face party is shocked <laughs> when a tiger eats her face after their, you know, landslide victory. She quote she was quoted as saying, I never thought tigers would eat my face. It's like, you're gonna get your face eaten. Like, yeah. look, we're not gonna be able to say anything that doesn't go completely a hundred percent with the orthodoxy if you don't draw a hard line and say, if it's not criminal, we're gonna let it happen. And and I guess well, okay, so let's play devil's advocate a little bit. 